Hey, welcome back everybody. So we're going to kind of go for creating a little application where we do sessions with Go, the Go programming language. And uh, we worked on that last week. And the code base that we're working on, if you're catching this online, is GitHub goes to 11. And you want to go into the Golang web dev repo. And so that's, uh, that's the code base right there. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm always tweeting about you know, life and web, front end, back end, and the Go programming language. Right there, Twitter, Todd McLeod. And then uh, the other thing is, uh, if you want to see all these YouTube videos, YouTube Todd McLeod, and that will bring you to them. So if you're catching this one, it's one out of many. And the last thing I want to point out is I'm building a website with some friends, Greater Commons, and uh, it's a place that brings teachers, students, and employers together. So it helps get people skills so they could get into jobs. You could learn, or you could help people learn, and then uh, turn that into employment, turn that into educational opportunities. So check it out. It should be launching pretty soon, greatercommons.com. Pretty cool. So that's the, the game plan for this video is to do something where we create sessions. And we banged away at this last night, or last week, and we'll bang away again at it right now. And the first thing we want to do is just sort of write a cookie. So I'm going to start out with funk main and inside funk main HTTP listen and serve and then colon 8080 and uh, and then nil for default default serve mux and then HTTP handle uh, funk and then put in a pattern and then inside that pattern put in some sort of a function name and we'll do funk index and that's a HTTP dot response writer and then we have a request and we have a pointer to an HTTP request. And then that's where we could put our function code. And I'll add one more route in here just to kind of handle the, you know, favicon. favicon.ico handler. And I'm not 100% solid on what I'm going to be showing you tonight. So there's many different ways you could probably approach this, but I have some notes here just so we have a a pathway to follow. So I'm just also glancing at my notes as uh, we go through this just because I worked this out all beforehand just to make sure I had a good example to present to you all. But it's also kind of nice to talk about each line as we write it instead of, you know, just just going kabang. Here it is and going through it. It's fun to see it being written. So uh, we want to create a cookie. And if we go and we look at the documentation for a cookie, a cookie is uh, in the net HTTP package, and it's a struct, and it has fields. And we could also ask for our cookie off of our request. And so I could get my cookie, and an error, if I look on my request, my request has that right there, this method cookie. And that method cookie is attached to a pointer to a request. And it takes in the name of the cookie and gives us back a pointer to a cookie and an error. And so it takes in the name of the cookie, and let's just call this cookie session. And then it gives back a pointer to a cookie and an error. And so if I have an error, I could check my error there. And if my error is not nil, what does that tell me? It tells me there's an error, right? So I get an error if there's no cookie. So if there's no cookie, what should I do? I could create a cookie. So this will ask for the cookie, and if it's there, I get it. And if it's not there, I create it. Okay, so to create a cookie, I'm going to do uh, just, you know, this ID will be colon equal to UUID and new v4. And I have two choices there. I have new 7 hatch and I have Satori. I'm going to go with Satori because you don't have to check the error with Satori. And uh, so I get my new UUID and a cookie is a struct. And so I could just call this whatever I want. Maybe I'll go with C, but we'll keep it cookie just so it's a little bit more clear. And, uh, and this matches my notes, so I don't want to go too far off my notes. And so we're getting a pointer to a cookie there. And I need that just to be equals. There we go. And so now I have fields, which I could populate with that cookie. So name, session. So I call this cookie session. And value is going to be, uh, it's going to be id.string. And, uh, and then I could also set HP only and uh, make that true and I could set the path to PAM. So no matter where I set this cookie in my application, 
Uh, the path is root. I mean, that's the same one I'm setting it at, but that means it's available throughout my entire site. So HTTP only is one of the cookies. Does anybody, we've, we've looked at the documentation for cookie before. So HTTP, I kind of feel like bringing it up. So let's take a look at it. Dun, 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 dun. New tab. I get a new tab. There we go. And so godoc.net HTTP and just come down and look at index. And then here's cookie. And we have HTTP only, right, which means you can't access it with JavaScript secure would mean that you could only get there with HTTPS. Max age is less than zero, like a negative one means expire immediately. Raw expires is deprecated, or sorry, expires is deprecated. And uh, then we have path in our path, which we set, we have the name and the value. So just the things on cookie. So there we've uh, created the cookie and then we could just print line or, yeah, print line would print it out to standard out, but we could also serve this back with a func.f print, file print to a writer, and uh, file print to the writer, and then we want to print some value. We could pr print that cookie back to the browser. That's good. So if we run this, I'll leave that in because that's my notes. Leave it in. Follow the notes. Let me run it. Uh, <coughs> I thought, oh, 45 pagination, that's not it, 45 session. I'm in 00 temp, 00 temp, going web dev. Pagination, but here I'm calling it session. Where's pagination? Oh, I need to go into 46. 46 spring, and then 45, and then 01, there we go. And so there's my cookie value. Session is equal to this stuff right there. So this cookie is equal to this value. And if I look at that here under application cookies, I have uh, a couple of different ones in here. And the one that I've called it is that one right there. So that's the name of the cookie. There's the value. I'm going to clear all these. I was uh, just out in the hallway before class, and I saw this on the newsstand. And so it was literally next to the newspapers, and it's uh, fast and easy web development with Macromedia Dreamweaver MX. How many people have heard of Macromedia? Raise your hand. Dude, if you know Macromedia, Macromedia was bought by Adobe. Like Macromedia was like in the late 90s. Whoa, they were awesome. That was like the company. They made web tools. They were so good. They had uh, Fire something that was for for uh, image editing. I want to say Firefox, but that's not it. I can't remember the name of it. But Dreamweaver was huge. And uh, so I picked up this book, and I thumbed through it, and I've read it. I read this back in the day. Because <laughs> all my notes were in here, all my highlighting, and I could recognize it, you know. It's like, so somehow one of my books from back in the day ended up out there. I don't think I'm the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> I had a hiatus for a decade in between that and this. <laughs> Takes me a while. So that's uh, the first bit. We've got our cookie there. And so let's uh, copy this. So there's a cookie. I'm just going to copy this file. Control C, Control V. And let me get the right naming con uh, convention from my notes. And I went with, on my notes, session. So we'll call this one 02 session. So it's going to be a little bit of a longer video if you're watching this online. We're just going to kind of work our way through it. All right, so now we want to create some sort of a session. And so to have a session, what do we need to do? We store a unique ID on the user's computer, and then we can associate that unique ID with some, some sort of uh, data storage on our server. 
And so somebody sends you a unique ID, you could identify them. You could say this unique ID is associated with this user, right? Like, hey, I put a unique ID on that person's computer, Robert's computer, and it's like, when he makes a request back to my server, he sends that unique ID. I can look at that unique ID and I can say, who's this unique ID associated with? Oh, it's associated with Robert. So we need some way to associate that. So one of the things we're going to need is we're going to need a user. So I could create a new type, type user struct. And I'm going to just have a username, which is a string. And then I'm going to have a first name, which is a string. And I'm going to have a last name. Last, which is string. There we go. And I'm going to create a couple of variables. I'm going to start using templates. So I'll do my pointer to package template template. From package template type template. And uh, it wants me to import. And I'm going to go with HTML template, which is built on top of text template, but has stuff for making it cool with HTML. And I have var DB users is equal to a map with string and uh, it's going to be a user and that needs to be on the outside user and then I have var db sessions and that is equal to a map with string and it's going to store a string and so what this is going to store is uh, I'll start with this one this is going to store this is going to store the session ID and the user ID and this is going to store the user ID and the user. So when somebody sends us a unique ID, we could take that unique ID and we could say, hey, is that associated with the user? Yeah, this one right here. And we could take that user ID and we could get the user. Okay? I like that. Now I'm going to initialize my templates, init, and uh, my TPL is going to be equal to template must template parse glob and we'll put this in a folder called templates and we'll parse everything in there that ends with go html and so let's create that folder templates and uh, and then we could create some files in there let's create that file index.go html pow Let me just bring my notes up, make sure I get everything consistent. Anybody have any questions about that so far? So we'll come back and finish up our templates here in a minute. What did I leave out from this previous one, this previous example? I'm just looking at my code and noticing I left something out. I left out setting my cookie. So if there's an error, we now want to http.set cookie, response writer, and cookie. And set cookie takes the response writer and that pointer to the cookie. And so I'm going to do that right here http.set cookie, response writer, cookie. Who can it be now? I wish I could pause these videos. I'm just going to stop it and start it again. I got to take this call.